And by the way, at the same time, they planted some more trees. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to have the kind of foresight to do something that people would thank you for 500 years later? Isn't that amazing? Now, my guess is with the pace of technology and the scope and course of human events, we're probably not going to be able to look forward 500 years. Not 50. Let's settle for that. Wouldn't it be amazing to have that kind of foresight and that kind of wisdom? I told you I would talk to you about why St. Louis Park is different. Here's my theory on that. Here, the secret wish, not a secret. We think like that. We think in terms of once upon a time because we know in this community that today is the once upon a time of 50 years from now. Now, St. Louis Park prides itself on being a children first community. As Tom alluded to, for the third year in a row, we were named one of the 100 best communities in the entire country for kids. And that, frankly, is an award that has kind of a dual purpose. You, you deserve it because of what you've done, but it's also an award that you have to earn going forward because that's what that award's about. But I want to ask you, in societal terms, in the kind of decisions you make, in the economic terms, in the things you do, the, philosoph the philosophy that underpins your decisions that you do everywhere in the world, what do you think that means? A children first community. What do you think that means? I'm getting old. So some of my friends are getting old. So I go to retirement parties. And inevitably, you go there and there's some person that's 65, 70 years old, and they're standing there getting their gold watch for a lifetime of loyal and dedicated service to whatever organization they've been with. And inevitably, the conversation gets around to who it is they hold responsible for that. And inevitably, it's, it, the story is always a little different, but the message is always the same. Here stands some 70-year-old person, misty-eyed, talking about people that help them, the people that have been dead for 30 years. And the story is always a little different, but it always goes something like, you know, my old man worked double shifts at the mill. My mother took in laundry. Somebody scrimped. Somebody saved. Somebody deferred their instant gratification. Somebody worked real hard so I could have a better life. The story is always like that. And was it work? Yes. Was it sacrifice? Yes. Was it expensive? Absolutely. Was it worth it? Go to the retirement parties and you tell me. You know what's amazing? If you spend all of your time fretting about today, you have a really tough time taking care of tomorrow. But if you work hard on preserving tomorrow, it's amazing. Today kind of takes care of itself. You know, St. Louis Park has a kind of a history of doing stuff like that. Um, I think the smartest thing that the city council and the city of St. Louis Park ever did you could argue this, I suppose, but in my opinion, one of certainly the wisest decisions as a, as a council ever made was the point of sale housing inspection program. It was an ordinance passed in 1972. The realtors in the, in the audience will know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to have your house inspected in order to sell it. And I talked to one person who was alive. I've only ever known one person who was alive on that council, and, I, and he now has passed away. And I asked him, why'd you do that? Because in 1972, understand that most of the post-World War II houses were hardly broken in. They were 10, 15 years old. And it was Lenny Teal. He used to be the mayor of St. Louis Park. And he said, well, we did it because we knew that the, that the backbone of any community is its housing stock. If your housing stock starts to go to pieces, everything else you do is just fluff. Because the integrity of the community is going to be compromised. And we knew in 1972 we were going to have to preserve that housing stock going forward in the future. And it was terribly controversial. People hate they thought it was crazy, they thought it was expensive, they thought it was going to be too much work, and they thought it was unnecessary because these houses, you know, my house is 100 years old, okay, lots of houses in St. Louis Park are, are older than 1950, but a lot of houses were built between about 1950 and 1965 in this community, and nobody could see the purpose in doing that. But think about that now. My guess is, and I don't have any statistics to back this up, but my guess is that a fair number, a fair percentage of the, of the people that are buying that first house in St. Louis Park, that are buying that little 1040 Rambler someplace in the western part of St. Louis Park, that first time home buyer, the people we've been trying to, to encourage to move here, to raise their family, to send their kids to the schools here, are under the age of 35. Who is that ordinance for? Think about that. Who is that ordinance for? And yet, the people that did it are mostly dead. So why do they do crazy stuff like that? Why do we do now this kind of stuff that Tom outlined? Why would we have a housing inspection program here? Why would we strengthen it? Why, what a pavement management program? Why would we be doing that in order to preserve the infrastructure here? 
Why would we be planning for light rail transit? I mean, it's amazing. There are people in this audience that we might live long enough to see that now, as a matter of fact. I think. But why would we do some of the planning we're doing, the sidewalks and trails, the neighborhood revitalization commissions to increase those kinds of connectedness in St. Louis Park? The list goes on and on. Wi-Fi, as badly as that turned out, why would you do that? Who would that have been for? Had that been successful, who would have benefited from that? You know, it's amazing. It, the list like that kind of goes on and on. And so who's responsible for all of that? Whose thought process leads to that kind of decision? Take a wild guess, gang. You. You were the people that shaped the city in St. Louis Park. Two years ago, we engaged in the visioning process whereby hundreds, even thousands of people came together to set a vision for what they wanted St. Louis Park to look like. Not today, but 30, 40, 50 years from now. And it was an enormous amount of work for those people to do that. And they set forth that vision so that they would create the kind of community that we would be one day proud to leave to our kids and grandkids. Will that be work? Yes. Will it be expensive? Yes. Think of the money we spent on Excelsior Boulevard to clean that place up. And we continue to spend in this community. Will it be work? Hard work? Absolutely. Will it be worth it? You know, the ironic part of that is, if you do it right, I mean, if you really nail it and you do it right, we may never know. And the even more ironic part of that is it to us? It doesn't matter that we know. What's important is that they know. Because I'll tell you something. Maybe there is something in the water around here, but it's part of our culture, part of the way we think. It's part of the community orientation that we have in St. Louis Park. But we listen to people we'll never hear. We watch people we'll never see. We understand the wants and needs and desires of people we'll never meet. We have a process in place now whereby we can devote every ounce of energy we have to doing the right thing for people who will one day inherit everything we have. But we'll never know. Because they will judge us in the harshest light possible. You are all a very important set of constituents for all the reasons I've outlined. You're the process. You're the keepers of that process. You're the people who do this. But everybody in this room knows that there is an equally important set of constituents out there. These are people whose approval we must seek, whose favor we must curry, and they don't vote. At least not yet. Because some of them haven't been born yet. Why do we do this? We do it so that one day people who will drive on our streets and play in our parks and send their kids to our schools and live in our homes and run and patronize our businesses will look back on what we do now and say to themselves, gee, I'm glad they did that once upon a time. Thank you, all of you, for being a part of that amazing process in this most amazing place. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for coming.